which could be quite a hit. Oh, I think it's a huge hit. Some of them would be especially for me. Is that is that true that it would to go from normal to high? Oh, oh. Yeah, phenomenal. Be this much that, money again. Yeah. You would probably it double your like this much money again. again. You do, okay, fine. It's in that. I just, yeah. just, need, I just yeah. need a ballpark. Yeah. 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 Okay, it's not just. I mean, the structure and the envelope won't change, but your systems. Yeah. Okay, I'm set. Goodbye, everybody. So see you. Bye, Melanie. Thank, thank you. Bye, Melanie. See you next week. Uh, are we done? Is are we happy with that uh, yep. operation? Okay. Okay, so now we've got uh, the design team principal. Principal still creek expectations from the steering committee. This could be. Uh oh. <laughs> that was a big long email, wasn't it? Yeah. Is there an email I'm supposed to have? Um, Part of this came out of the conversations Craig and I were having to put together an agenda and put together design development, and Drew as well, and just um, kind of like my introduction to here about what design development is and what we need to do now as a team to make sure that design development moves forward in an appropriate process and we don't trigger a bunch of delays or extra sort of uh, erroneous work or go down bird walks where we get off track on uh, conversations. Um, uh, unless it's deemed essential to the project success. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Point. <laughs> Just pointing towards the public information meeting. Yeah. yeah like, absolutely. I think that's part of the continuum of delivering the project, public information meetings. I don't think we're changing or going on new ideas or tangents. And I think there's a number of topics associated with design development that you should articulate as part of your schedule or your work so that everyone's clear and understands the work of what design development is. I think that's important so that we know that there's aspects of how the steering committee is feeding into your work to complete your work in a timely fashion. And when we become a pain in the ass? Uh, <laughs> never. Yeah. Don't worry about that. Um, I guess the gist of that email was to just start to outline that a shift in how we've been working so far has been very much about um, like hands-on engagement with the design itself and a lot of back and forth about how's this going to work, how's that going to work. And we've got to the point where we have a schematic design that is functionally everybody knows and understands and is comfortable with. And the work of design development is going to be really frustrating for you because it'll look like nothing's happened. Yeah. And, uh, and ultimately, there's less engagement. There's we have, yeah, yeah. We don't yeah. need to meet as much. Me what too. we need to do, Aww. what we need to do, is actually meet with our consultant team who are like, yeah. "What's That's going right. on with Bowen Island? <laughs> yeah, is that project is that project still on?" Because <laughs> what's happened is, for all the, <laughs> the best reasons, we've been meeting with you directly and avoiding going to our consultants because they don't need to do any work until we've actually worked on this thing. Yeah, exactly. Now, as of like half an hour ago, when everybody seemed happy enough <laughs> with this change in plan, we feel like we've got a nice, like, clear direction. We can prepare a base set of drawings for our consultants and meet with them and talk about the project and sort of send them off on doing their own real design work about the building. like where a pipe's going to go, how big is you know the yeah. boiler going to be, um, does it make sense to have it at the lower level, where the foundation's going, like, but real nitty-gritty design stuff. And we need time to go back and forth with them. And so we they start with our base plan and an idea of what the building's going to be like. And we give them some time to prepare their kind of first draft of design. And then we go through this kind of iterative process where we look at all of their, you know, electrical, mechanical, civil, architectural, structural, all together to say, oh, well, this is actually, you know, you guys are competing for the same space, this isn't going to work, or, oh, well, we're going to have to move this a little bit in order to accommodate, you know, the size of the foundations you need, that kind of thing. So that's design development, and it's trying to deal with all the little problems that are created when we first start design. While it's called design development, there's a lot of, it's a large technical component to it. 
Yeah. It's and more technical design. It's it's exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And, it, and this, the, the uh, competing for space is a big part of that. So the structural engineer wants to design the roof trusses this way, the mechanical engineer wants to run ducts through them and they're this big, and the, the, the two things don't work together. So it's getting all of those things sorted out. We were talking the other day about, you know, how are we gonna get the electrical services through the bin wing? Do we want, is everything gonna be overhead? And that means you've got drops through there and everywhere, or do we have things running under the floor? If so, that's a different system for the floor if it's not a slab on grade. Yeah, we get it. Right. Um, and if we want to move quickly, we can't have it too many cooks in the kitchen. Well, none of us have yeah. technical but we have, but none of your but cooks we have, anyway. We have to be clear <laughs> going forward. We need to be two separate trucks. <laughs> but there's, there's a lot of them that try. Well, yeah, and there's um, a lot of information that we need yeah. still, obviously, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. We got to be perfectly yeah. clear going forward from here, yeah. though, because if you're sending out to all your your team that this is this is what we got, that's what they're designing to. Yeah, that's right. And, and we can't go in after that and change a whole bunch of stuff. Like, and this is where the trust stuff, comes in. This is yeah. where the trust comes yeah. in. That's exactly it. And so um, we will likely meet less, but that's okay because we'll be busy working on our end. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then so I think what Sam... Questions that don't come in the meeting collaborative form, but come in pointed directly mm -hmm. to certain people. Yeah. yeah. And the things that we'll be asking you for mm -hmm. in a more direct form are things that are far more detailed than before. Yeah. It'll be like... Yeah, like what kind of, you know, you got a grand piano, what other pieces of equipment do you have and where are they going to go? Yeah, specific, yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think what Sam's setting up to talk about is that this will enable you to focus on different work that is also needed in terms of making the project. Exactly. The important stuff like fundraising. No, yeah. I, 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 did, I did say that this, this was less about design, but there is a piece you will know when you look at the comments from people either by email or recorded from um, coming to the booth at Bowfest, that people had comments about the design, they, and there were things that they liked or that they didn't like, that you know things felt thin or they felt, you know, we don't... At this, at the end of schematic design, we have a sort of a plan and a three-dimensional vision. But how? But then there's a whole fleshing out of that that we were talking about the other day, which is about the details. It's about the edges, about eaves, and things like that that you haven't seen so far. And so there will be a time when the design, that part of it, the architectural design, will have advanced, and we will want to come back to you with that. And that part will not be boring. It will be interesting. Mm -hmm. That'll be fun again. I think the other thing that I wanted to highlight in our in that email that I sent out was the conversation that we had around sustainability and sustainable design initiatives. Mm -hmm. We at one meeting a while ago kind of went all over sure, sustainability yeah. and came <laughs> up with this great big list of stuff that we wanted to look at. Um, and what we have what we would like to do is um, involve our consultant team on, I guess, maybe we should add, Sam, another parallel um, investigation, which is to basically describe to you what sustainability design measures make sense for this project and what don't. And that will, that will take actually a little bit of work for the consultant team to determine. Some things will be really obvious, like the soil is not suitable for geothermal, or we don't have the space for it, so we strike it off the list. Others will need energy modeling or study in order to prove whether they're going to make sense or not, okay. or be cost effective. And so there's a scope of work around sustainability that we would like to add to the project based on what we've heard. And so that will come your way. So I'm just kind of doodle and articulate visually some of these work processes. So that's the design work. There's other consultants in there. Yeah. yeah. There's a sustainability portion that happens within this integrated design team. Exactly. All of this work we refer to as integrated project delivery because there's these working groups. One, two, three, four, five all doing the project management, all integrating the aspects of the deliverables 
Yeah. And so our, our, our process steps are going to be to develop an understanding of what the priorities are and the right sequence of operations so that these guys can work through their flow, but we're also understanding what we need to understand about the building associated with the financial objectives and the operational objectives. And so some of those pri priorities are FF and E list because that has a that's an input to a room data sheet. And a room data sheet, maybe I'm getting ahead of myself dragging through, but yeah, it's a deliverable of the architectural and design team, integrated design team that talks about every room in the facility, the lights, the walls, the floors, the yeah. What is it? What's it look like? What equipment's in there? <clears throat> so there's these inputs and outputs to the space associated with all of our work, and I would say the operational work plan is, a, and that committee has an FF and E list as one of their deliverables. Because mm -hmm. you already started equipment list, and now we need to get down to that aspect of handing it over to the design team to see how it fits into the room data. So we have a manager's meeting next Wednesday and we're empowering the managers to do their lists, to do their inventory, and uh, we'll be working on the inventory list in the office. Good. Perfect. Perfect. And I was just wondering how that, and that has to inform the financial work, the FFD list. Yes. So, and that's um, really relevant to the imperative that we get that as, as quickly as possible. Yeah, because there's a, there's a what we have, yeah. and then there's what we need, need to get. Right. We wish we could have. And I think that's why, to me, this is one of the first things on the priority list. This is like number two. I'm, I'm actually putting these in, in order yep. here for me. They're, uh, yeah, in terms of our work, they're kind of parallel. They don't, you don't just sit down and like do them. They are kind of iterative as well, where we develop the framework of all the rooms in the building. We prepare some assumptions about what is in those rooms and what they're going to look and feel like and how they're going to be controlled or connected. Mm -hmm. And then we sort of offer that back and it's like, what do you think of this? Yeah. And you can go through and say, oh, well, in this room, we definitely want to make sure we have whatever. So what we, yeah, or, but we so talked so about at our, at our, what are we called? Operations, operations, and operations. And operations. Yeah. Yeah. was, I mean, just getting down to practicalities and budget is managers will bring over all their furniture. But where we're going to need is the system work planning in the open areas, the, uh, you know, and that's where we're going to need some help because so that's this, where our money needs to be spent is the open areas, the workstations. And, yeah, and that's how right. does that impact on the budget though? Because I think we only have about two hundred fifty thousand budgeted for him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, yeah. So no. clearly, I don't think that's enough. So where, how do we, how do we determine that? I mean, where you determine that iteratively. So the first step is. Do a list. Yeah. Okay. Come up with, with the five hundred thousand dollar number first. Okay. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So are no. things like <laughs> are things I mean, like the retractable it. seating in FF and E or are no. they in the building? Is actually on the base building in the US report. So okay. we have a cost report yeah. from schematic design, we have a detailed cost report. Anything that's not in that cost report that you need that's a uh, something that plugs into a wall, something that's in a room, uh, except for millwork. Sound system, lighting system, Sound not in the, is that in the building? Right. I don't think that is. I think actually lighting or is. Um, I, don't, I think they both are. Theatrical lighting? It would be good to know that, yeah. I can't remember all the details of that before right now, top of my head, but that's where we're going to go and look. When so, so the first thing is put a list together. Yeah. Start with the things that require to be plugged in, plumbed in, require Wi-Fi, take up huge amounts of space like grand pianos, um, <laughs> and come in and put them on the list. And that list is going to live into operations because what happens is you do the first draft of the list and all you're doing is identifying where they are based on a room number. Then the next step is getting some cost estimates or estimates and framework for what these things are. Right. And then you go back through the list and add the things that Oh, I forgot about garbage cans or recycle bins because we need, we're environmentally conscious and there's 12 recycle bins all of a sudden and now your room's not big enough. So yeah, and, it's an and those room. things are really going to affect Aesthetically, the building they look awful because too, we're, again, we're them. talking about a very small building, it's going to be very busy and so some of the decisions about how those things, like how the operation works, will have a much bigger impact on the building 
than simply, oh, I'll get the recycling bins that they have at the school. It's like, well, those are enormous. So, like, cross out half of your seat in there because now you've got recycling bins. <laughs> like, that, that's where the iterative part comes in because and you'll come back with a list of all this stuff and we'll be like, ooh, try, we need smaller bins and we'll find a place for the piano. I think, yeah, I think each of the departments are going to have to do that. Obviously, Shawnee, you're going to have to do the list of yours. Yeah. And I don't know what happens in the washrooms and that sort of thing. I mean, that's... Those are easier. I mean, yeah, we can do that. Yeah, it's pretty standard. Yeah. So then the muni's going to have, like you say, you're doing all your stuff. But you should list it whether you got it or whether it's going to have to Absolutely. be acquired and then have a couple of columns where it already owned this and then need to buy. So Because there, there may be things that. like yeah. Um, yeah. you've got all sorts of seating and tables in the council chambers and the video thing, but like when you move over there, these might not actually be that suitable because you need to be able to stack them all up and put them on a cart and roll them into a small cabinet. Same the with the chairs. Yeah. Yeah. Same yeah. So, the, as we get into further detail, um, this will become more clear, but that's ultimately the project is to not talk about sort of where things are going to go in the building as much as we're... What's going to go in the space? What, what are the spaces going to be like? What are the finishes going to be like? What are people's expectations for, mm -hmm. you know, systems, lighting? And I guess just from an overall cost perspective, some there's some things that have to be done when the building's being built, and there's some things that would be nice to have that could easily be accommodated later mm -hmm. if we are start to run out of money. What are some good examples? That would be a great list to well, keep sure. as well because there's going to be a hierarchy. There's going to be a hierarchy for the project in terms of. Uh, not being able to do it all at once, yeah. Yeah. but as soon as you build a building and you open the doors, you'll likely be able to get a little bit further. Yeah. So, I don't know, theatrical lighting, solar panels, and solar yeah. panels. The, I mean, there there are things that are wish list items that, that you can almost there. guarantee that somebody will step up. Yeah. You know, at the ribbon cutting and say, "Let's do that. Like, this is great." Oh, oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 And grand piano. Yeah. Or once we yeah, new we grand also grand. have to stay within that discussion within the framework of the project that if you make yourself too, too future ready, you end up adding all this infrastructure that you may not actually implement yeah. at the time. Absolutely. Time. So you have to be future ready. Right. Be a balance. Yes. And there's certain things that I mean once we start actually breaking ground, more people might actually donate some money. In order Absolutely. to see these other things get put in right. Once beginning. the momentum becomes yeah. visual, it'll be something completely different. Yeah. Sam, what's SLP? Standard Okay. So that's could have been some other things. This is, yeah. <laughs> this is another big thing I really encourage owners to, to do at this stage of design development because it helps inform the design team's work and it's also so crucially needed to your work, you don't have to, I call it first draft because you don't actually need to finalize it until the day that, you know, the doors are open is when you put it into action. Yeah. But if at least you have, let's say for your standard operating procedures, you've identified your table of contents for the 25 you know you're going to need, and maybe at the end of the day you're going to have 150, but at least you, you've identified that there's a table of contents that needs to be developed. And until you put something down in a list like this, uh, you can't assign actions to it as to who's responsible for doing the work. So the point right now is to start identifying the needs so that we can assign resources to the work. Otherwise, we don't know who does what on the project and yeah. what it needs to be done by. Here, here. Uh, the financial work, that's, uh, I mean, there is a separate committee for this. So like lots of what's needed is ins and outs of these two. And we need to hire somebody to help us. With which parts? With both parts. We're, we're without key staff, and um, we talked about this at our meeting the day before yesterday. Yesterday. So there's, there's, yesterday. Different, yesterday. 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 there's different types of resources depending on what you have the internal capacities to do as an organization. We, have, we, don't, we have zero internal capacities. And so we need to help with the business case operation, how it's going to pay for so you know, business operate. case is one thing in terms of... And fundraising and is another fundraising. skill set. We know that. Yeah, okay. But even okay. putting together our first draft of our operations. Model. So there are consultants like 
quasi-retired CAOs and whatnot that are sort of the lone wolves out there that do that, and then there's the larger firms. Well, we've talked, we've got a name from our auditors, and we do have the name from the group that was working on the projects before. Uh, what I've done in the past is actually know write an RFP for this function, and I've got better results by being able to evaluate an RFP the same way we hire experts. Do you like have this. an exa sample of that RFP for something yeah. like this? Could that would we, be great. Could we take that? That's not something that WSP does. Yeah. Um, or has people. Right. We do have people that do that. Would I trust them for your project? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, well, I am to totally that frank. They are. Uh, they're more suited for larger scale are, transportation the infrastructure yeah. organizations right. yeah. that do the ops plans for, let's say, C-SPAN. Right. 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 Not Bowen yeah. Mountain. Right. You want someone to. Do the beehive. You don't want someone that's yeah. still in the late. Thank you. We do. That's great. But whether but it's we do have resources in terms of people or other than asking for something. Even just in terms of writers, not content developers, there's lots of that that can support. Yeah. Right? So that's a different what aspect, is, depending on what you need and the we data need everything. that you have. We need so, a lot. Well, one of the things we've talked about is it, well, two things. We're talking about how operations, um, developing and identifying our operations and how that would look is going to inform all of the other, from the management to, i sorry, from the financial to the... Um, this is why we need to do a work breakdown right structure Communications, for right. Yeah. But one of the other things is how uh, governance, governance of the facility is, is huge. Okay. Governance and so, and so we, we also thought we've got to start there in terms of developing a, an operations, or an MOU, operations plan. Yeah. Sorry, an MOU first, and, and determine policies and procedures in terms of mm -hmm. how we're going to operate facilities. And cost sharing and a whole and, bunch of other things. Well, yeah. there's that, and that's more the financial. But even so, we yeah. were looking at what's been done in the past, and one of the uh, so I think everybody's aware that uh, there was an MOU that was developed, yeah. and an MOU, MOU and it was based on actually creating a whole other society Correct. to um, to operate and manage the facility. And, and in our discussions the last few days, um, and actually Sean and I have had a few discussions about this. We just feel it, it's, it's when there was a much bigger, let's say, complex, because it was a it was campus style. Um, oh, yeah, okay. That's what was envisioned previously, much more bigger spaces, more programming, that we don't, this, this project doesn't require that level of complexity. That it's, we could do it through procedures and policies and agreements. And joint so, management committee. And joint, and exactly, and then go to a joint management committee on an ongoing basis. So does that sound, I mean, you know, this is a decision of this committee, of course, um, but starting there and trying to develop and flesh out something along those lines, yeah. does that make sense? Yeah. I, I, think, think, I think it should be a committee of sorts. I think you already have enough committees. We just need to now start assigning <laughs> duties. Yeah, this is a good thing. Down to operations. Yeah, yeah. Down to operations. For a model, in terms of looking yeah. at a governance model. Yeah, rather than a society, it just adds a like, extra layer. Yeah. layer. Yeah. Yeah. We, 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 we figured need. you weren't big enough. Not yeah. big enough to compromise enough. So I'm just brainstorming up uh, and another ops plan. But that's what we need to do is have a separate meeting on these subjects. Okay. Yeah. And it's probably these two committees together, yeah. and we brainstorm. Pretty much we, the same people. We wipe yeah. work. <laughs> we sort of did we don't, that. We don't take all that yeah. time. No. Yeah, no, no absolutely. No. Yeah. And, yeah. And, um, and we focus on mind mapping, um, what needs to be done, and then prioritize, right? We all know mind mapping. Like the we sort of did some of that. Yeah. Yeah. Would, so. would it make it uncomfortable if I came over and hugged you? Uh, <laughs> yeah. We just, oh. none of us actually sat there drawing pictures. I, I'm just yeah. visual, yeah. so I always can okay. do it. This, this, I like lists. This, this is it's helping. Yeah. <laughs> it's very nice. Not yeah. So this uh, this is good. This is good because this is it shows where uh, the direction we're going. Because uh, it's kind of a regrouping today and finding out yeah. where we're going. And I think that's quite wise. The design team has made it quite clear to her that they don't want to talk to us anymore. So <laughs> we're going to let them go. <laughs> Oh, we're going to be talking to you just about different things. Yeah. Right, so that communication speed is really important, of course. Yeah. So we're, we've still got you for that. Yeah. And, and, and there is that, I think, going forward. Yeah, but as far as, as, far as the meetings, and, and I, I think I was just going to be lots of conversations and stuff like that. Okay. I think as far as that's it. Yeah.
What of these things from your process are highest priority? Mm. I have thoughts, but your process might be different than my brain process. Room data sheets. Yeah? Oh, from that whole board? Yeah, definitely room data. But in the ops, understanding of operations, for just for a second, let's just think about that. Right? Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah, those this, are. This one, all of them? <laughs> this one comes in later. Yeah. Did you just say yes? Housekeeping, more or less. A little bit. But later. Well, a little bit. Right? Storage, what's all there? Mm -hmm. So. Um, Staff line, not so much. Maintenance is everything, so. <coughs> Right. But sometimes that's a, you but, know, is there a, if there's a maintenance manager or a stakeholder we need to engage in terms of uh, and, our, and utilities and, and Our business. consultants are going to want to know hours of operations really soon. Mm -hmm. Right. Because exactly. the mechanicals, everything's got to be sort of designed to And soon. lighting. And lighting. All, and, and all of these hours of operations trigger down into utilities that's and energy, that's which right. is a sustainability yeah. issue. I mean, yeah. And then there's, you know, there's a link mag walks and keying and all of this stuff that, you know, this will be a little bit later down the road. But so, uh, Standards. Well, I guess that's SOPs, but one of those yes. SOPs is sort of the maintenance SOPs. Well, let's put that under maintenance. It's already done. Sorry, I'm thinking about mm -hmm. um, Am I missing anything? No. Budget, I guess, under the operational plan. Oh. Um, <laughs> the waste disposal you talked about, that, that's actually the key one, like... Um, that's okay. housekeeping and waste. That, that kind so of that's like loading and storage of... How do you this, the how thing, do you stuff out of the building? The thing that sort of came up, it's sort of the, it? the, the ongoing white elephant in the room is the um, storage. Mm -hmm. And there seems to be a, a certain lack of clarity about... That, yeah, yeah, it's going to come That'll out. That'll help, <laughs> but it'll just highlight the. This is going to highlight the problem. Right. Right. Okay. Right. It needs to be. Uh, so this is number one priority. Something for storage. You can never yeah. have enough food. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
It's the need, right? Not the nice to have. Fair enough. I know we lost this, so we don't need to. It's not lost. As well, these are this is. Those are only that's three windows. Focus in on those. The rest of it is solid wall that's potentially available. The hallway, where your hand is, is is again. Those are areas that are available. And it's worth you highlighting them now as needs because. You know, you don't want the vestibule wall to be counted as artwork or gallery. Right. <laughs> but or if you identify the family. best places, yeah. then when we're doing the exercise of saying, oh my gosh, where are we going to fit the like data racks, right. we'll probably avoid that place if it's identified as a need. Let's put all the thermostats on that wall. <laughs> yeah. There's going to be a competition for acoustic panels and things like that. So yeah, yeah. It's, so it's important to keep the needs clear. So, yeah, if you see a wall, like in a small multi purpose room, mm -hmm. and, and you start, you know, that would be a great art wall, yeah, that then that would be good to identify that as a need space. And just in terms of uh, want getting this information through, mm -hmm. don't feel bad about literally taking a eight and a half by 11 and putting some red lines on it and some notes and sending it to us because we have a whole system for accounting for you know design changes and making sure that thoughts and stuff get registered in the design and so um, um, it's the, useful information <laughs> the earlier the information comes in the easier it is for us to integrate it can Jack, it can Jack it's like the race <laughs> <laughs> right. Jackie, take that one. And, and that was just an example. I was just using that as an example. Of no, but, but it's a great that. example. Yeah. Like, like, it's I need to know that to come up with. Homework cast for all of us. The headline and drawing some thoughts and stuff. Yeah. 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 No, it, this is exactly what it, it's yeah. about, though, yeah. because if we realize that oh, actually, wall space is at a premium because we actually want to have artwork, it may actually inform our electrical design to right. say we want these walls to be free. Put yeah. all your detectors and stuff on the ceiling, like. That's where we're getting into uh, design development. I've gone into so many finished spaces where you have a nice clean wall that long, yeah, and, then and there's a switch there. Yeah. There. Oh. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Oh. There, right? oh. to, to Kathy's earlier comment, to Kathy, if you're having a, meet, a manager's meeting within a week, you should you should have at least one plan per manager, so they they've got a drawing that they can be looking at as they're speaking to their needs. I am so beyond capacity right now. I, I like, I'm so close to falling right here. I have an organization to run. I have zero capacity in sales. I don't know realistically how we're going to do this from a staff perspective. So forgive me. <laughs> no, that's fine. It's real. Yeah, we got to hear that. Real. Yeah. So that means we all have to. Pick up and help. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I'm sorry. No, don't okay. be sorry, Kathy. It needs to be said. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, there's some, um, you know, there's obviously there's a pretty short staff break now. It's everybody's in just an amazing amount of work going through the municipality. So things are just uh, irregular. Enough. So we have to take that into consideration. There's absolutely no question. And if it's a time thing, it's a time thing. Yeah. You know, we're just going to have to deal with it. And, and breaking it down into manageable tasks. Hopefully, it's not overwhelming. You know, we're getting yeah. carried on trying to get it all out no, on the table. It, but, but it. And it seems like an amazing amount of work that has to be done. But we have to break it down into, into like you say, manageable tasks. And that's and that's what has to happen. Mm -hmm. And if we have to help out with that. We can certainly do that. But it is not. key for each person to actually sit down and say what it is they need for their area. Oh yeah, that's a, that's fine. Yeah. But it's just, you know, and I don't think that- Somebody else would pull Let's it Let's say, Sean, together. if we came to you and said, what do you need in your office? Yeah. You need a table, a chair, you need some filing cabinets, you need nice lights and uh, well, a couple of plug yeah. What do you need that you don't already have? Yeah. Well, everything. Oh, well, <laughs> I'll also list what I have. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'll say, and, you know, this will do for now sort of thing. At what level? I mean, this is this is okay for now, but I need to replace in right. two years or whatever. Yeah. You know, but that's the sort of thing that we have to go through. Well, would it help if one of us volunteered to go and sit down with everybody and put that list together? Well, I mean, from a and I guess I'm, I'm the only one that's got a finger to put up, I guess. I mean, water. You know, from my point for recreation, it's good. I'm going to outfit the whole fitness studio. Yeah. That too. Yeah. The office, of course, right. like, yeah. like all of that is going to come through me. 
Yeah. Um, essentially. So as well as the we'll have to do that large the long term room together. And the other, yeah. Kath, it seems like it seems a little overwhelming in the mass, but we're gonna break it down into pieces and we're gonna give you give everybody all the time, we're gonna do as much as we can to help out. I just I'm and sorry, it's overwhelming. Just, it's overwhelming. I know it is. But it's not, don't take it, it's just part of a process. And you do this, and you do this, and you do this, and you do this. We'll see I think if we we're can. also mapping out um, sort of an entire next phase of work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. From now which, until the new year. Which includes a lot of very complicated stuff in the meantime, which takes time to sort through. But uh, at the moment, we're really just wanting to get a picture of how we're going to work compared to how we were working before. So yes. Yeah. Um, giving some expectations. This this is sort of a typical process for getting through to building a building. Yeah. And so we have all the confidence in the world that we're going to get there. But really it's helpful to introduce the idea of, yeah, there's a lot to do. Let's keep working sort of methodically through the steps. Yeah. I think, um, I think it'll come together. And the, the iterative nature of it is really helpful because then you don't have to feel like you have all the answers when you submit it the first time. It depends, on people, it depends on people reviewing it and giving you comments and then adjusting it, kind of like what we did today. Like, good design depends on that iterative process. So um, it's, it can help to sort of take the pressure off to say, well, I mean, if we get 50% of the way there this time, and we get 40 the next time, then it's going to be easy after that. So. Um. But the one we do first is that have that meeting. Yep. <clears throat> um, in the essence of time, now you guys are heading back for that four o'clock journey. Uh, I don't know what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> what else do we got to talk about? We're, well, where do you? Hear, uh, how do you sit on this? Uh, let's say section six here, principal schedule. Mm -hmm. that, uh, so okay. we've, we've mapped out a schedule um, yeah. at Sam's request Yeah, good. in order to keep us moving forward. At this point, it seems achievable. There is lots to do. 